so lately I've been kind of obsessed with uh, steam turbines and making one, making a design that would work in my base. And after fiddling around with them for a while, I made some setups that well weren't as great. I think I've now made one uh, that doesn't uh, use any glitches. Uh, it's perpetual and should be able to be, well it actually is able to be built by Jupes, which I'll show at the end of this video. So um, when I started looking around after my first attempt for what other people had come up with, I saw indeed some use of Tepidizer glitches, which I also used in my first design. Um, for instance, the one where you keep them partially in oil and it heats up high enough, or where you use hydrogen to push the steam under the turbine, so it thinks there's a positive pressure difference. Uh, but the one I've made uh, so far, uh, I have not seen before, and I don't think uh, it uses any of the glitches uh, that are commonly used. So uh, Let's first show you the first design I did come up with uh, without knowing anything yet. So I saw that the tepidizers um, briefly put out some heat if you start them up even if they're not in uh, a liquid so i made some cycling signal to turn these things on and off again so they put out enough heat and well as you can see it works but it's also very very big um, so well i mean it's a cool setup but not really viable to to build in a base uh, and also there was one other problem, which is if you save and load the game, this tepidizer box stops working. So it suddenly doesn't heat up to the overheat temperature that steel gives it, and it just, well, becomes kind of useless. So every time I want to start it up, I have to replace these. So this one wasn't viable. Um, but after a lot of, well, thinking and running some numbers, uh, I came up with this boy, which I call Mantis. Uh, which is inspired by something a friend told me when I sent him a screenshot of this uh, of this thing. Because in the thumbnail, uh, the thing kind of looked like the head of one of these uh, these bugs, these mantises. So, well, that's where it's coming from. So, essentially, within this box sits a completely self-contained, self-sustained, infinite power steam turbine slash free heat deletion machine. So, the whole unit runs on its own, doesn't need anything else except for heat and produces about well 1600 watts of power while these things are running um, and they just delete uh, 14 degrees of whatever coolant you put in doesn't use any fuels, doesn't use any magma, doesn't produce any waste uh, it just uses the heat and well even if you don't want to if, if you consider putting in hot liquid as uh, a fuel and you could even put a tepidizer in here and this thing would still have enough power to heat this back up uh, so that it runs indefinitely um, yeah so basically what this is is a perpetual heat deletion station as far as I know it doesn't use glitches uh, doesn't nothing overheat so there's no damage here it's just a uh, result of an oversight of the developers where they basically didn't uh, consider conservation of energy when transfer converting to heat so first I'll briefly explain the cycle here then I'll quickly show the numbers uh, of why it works then I'll show you the inner workings because there's a lot more under the surface than what you're seeing now and uh, well I'll also show you of course how it's built by dupes at the end in the time-lapse video of my dupes actually building it in my base so how it works it's pretty simple uh, this uh, aqua tuners made out of steel so they can become 325 degrees heat uh, the vicinity through cooling the liquid uh, and they just heat the steam here uh, which gets hot, eno hot enough to pass through the steam turbine door pusher pushes the steam back so we get the positive pressure differential and this just repeats indefinitely so the steam turbine drives the aqua tuner because this delivers 2000 watt and it's 1200, needs 1200 and so that just runs and all it needs is, is the coolant so it gets coolant now of what's well, already minus 51 degrees so quickly showing you the numbers of why this works uh, basically the thermal aqua tuner produces more heat than the steam turbine requires to run while the steam turbine produces more power than the aqua tuner requires to run so these feed into each other for forever 
So I've run the numbers here. Uh, the steam turbine uses five uh, inputs, and if you block four, uh, it actually only needs two kilograms of steam per tile, and it will still run. So the minimum temperature that you have to put in here is 227 degrees Celsius, uh, while it puts out steam at a fixed 176, so that leaves a delta T of 51 degrees. And if you take into account that you use two kilograms per second, which needs to be cooled 51 degrees, then you can use the, steam the heat capacity of steam and calculate that it requires uh, indeed 426 kdTU per second. Now the aqua tuner uses 1200 watt to run and cools 10 kilograms of liquid each second and gives it a fixed uh, temperature change of 14 degrees as well. And well, there's two fluids that make this work. So that's water and uh, the super coolant. So this is the number for a super coolant if you work it out the same way. So 10 kilograms for 14 degrees with the heat capacity of super coolant, you get 1200 kilo DTUs per second, which is way more than this. So this can just run into each other all the time. And if I switch this around for the heat capacity of water, then you see it's still pretty 585. So it's still more than that. So that's that's why it works uh, all right so I guess you're all eager to see the inner workings of this thing uh, so from the outside it looks very simple you have one coolant input one coolant output and you can loop this if you just want to reuse the coolant uh, two power outputs these are uh, well divided into outputs each capable of delivering about 800 watts and if these things are off, it can produce a full 2000 watts. So that's why I made two outputs, so they won't uh, overload. Then there's a switch I can put on here to uh, start up the uh, vacuum pump, because when you start building it, it needs to be vacuumized. So this had to be there. Uh, and there's one more input for the water, because you do need to prime it with a lot of uh, steam to make it work so you need about well it's running on 50 kilograms of steel per tile here now and on the above, above it's a lot lower of course um, yeah then there's this switch here which just turns off the uh, aqua tuners when it gets uh, too hot because there's no need to heat up the steam any higher than 226 the other thing about this setup is that uh, it also cools itself while it cools the, uh, the fluid. So all these electronics needs to be, well, they, they overheat at 75 degrees, so they need to be cooled. So that's how the cooling setup is um, laid out. So what you have here is the outer cooling loop. This is just uh, a loop of uh, whatever coolant you put in, which constantly flows so even if uh, like right now the external cool is be coolant is being cooled this fluid will keep flowing until the fluid hits I s I've put it on 10 degrees now so when the fluid hits 10 degrees uh, these switch these um, shutoffs will divert the coolant from the loop into the uh, aqua tuners until it's again below 10 degrees and then it'll stop and this will keep running and then it'll take the outside coolant again which results in a beautiful picture. Well, I mean, it is, right? The outside being 10 degrees, well, almost seven, uh, while the inside is uh, kept hot. Well, I'll show you the power layout. It's ba pretty basic. There's just power coming in. It's being separated from the battery stack so I can have a higher capacity here. Uh, which then drives again the aqua tuners and the pump and the peripherals and all the tidbits. Uh, and finally I should show the automation setup, the automation layout. Uh, yeah, so there's an on-off switch also for the steam turbines if I wanted to do that. Here's the switch for the priming pump and the cycle for the door pusher which I tuned better in the final setup. Um, but yeah, so that's about it. Uh, I guess I'll just go on and show you right now how my dupes build it. Um, but yeah, there it is. I think this is a viable uh, perpetual steam turbine setup. Doesn't use anything, doesn't use glitches, uses all the components in the game as they are meant to be used. 
Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy about it. Let's go to my dupes. Alright, for this part of the video I'll mostly be keeping quiet so you guys can just enjoy watching my dupes at work. Basically it's just to show that it's viable to build this thing in a live game without debug mode and that all the resources that you need are there. So you'll be seeing me scrambling for resources every now and then and making or fixing mistakes because well, they are bound to happen as well. But for the rest of it you'll just see the thing being built in about 13 cycles. So enjoy! Alright, well time has come to start it up and as you see I'm finishing the last touches on my uh, device where I'm adding some power lines to make sure I can put in the first charge without destroying my entire power uh, circuit. So. Uh, yeah, here it's uh, actually starting up now, so it's filling with coolant and well here we go. Um, along the way I'm balancing a bit how much steam, uh, water I'm letting in because it does take a lot of energy to uh, put this water into steam so if you have a cool steam vent around or even a hot steam vent uh, it would be better to fill it up with steam already instead of having to evaporate it but as you can see uh, if you take your time and uh, manage the steam flow or the water flow uh, while also keeping an eye on the battery levels you see that it uh, actually works pretty well so in the end this thing will run perpetually and if I keep it dripping in with like 100 grams a second uh, it will finally stabilize on uh, yeah full energy full output all the time so that's it 
And if you'll stick around a little longer, I'll show you the current version since some bugs and points of improvement showed up while building it. So here they are. Alright, so here's version 1.1 of the Mantis. Uh, I've added some tweaks and uh, fixed some bugs that I came across when building it the first time. Uh, and mostly they are in the automation department. Uh, first of all, I added a sm smart battery anti-drain system so that you cannot uh, run dry the entire generator. So with this it just turns off the uh, power transformer when the charge drops below a certain point, which happened just now and then half of the charge is retained so this can never actually stop running because if if it would be completely empty the cycle would stop and you'd have to recharge it and it would be a pain in the ass so basically i just uh, added a knot gate to the to the feed to it and then it works out when it drops below the, the charge level then i had an issue with the cooling loop not initializing properly so when i first started uh, filling my setup with coolant it wouldn't automatically fill the outside loop, uh, which was caused by uh, this sensor bugging out when there is no actual fluid in the in the system. So it would just give an erratic uh, signal. Uh, I couldn't get it to turn on, so the whole bypass system would never initialize. It was an easy fix by just adding a NOT gate between the signal and putting this to below instead of above. Uh, in effect, it still uh, stops cooling when temperature is above 10 degrees. Uh, then I had the same issue with the aqua tuners not initializing properly in, uh, in a vacuum because the sensor was bugging out. So whenever there was power and fluid, it would just start running regardless of the setting of this, uh, this thing. Uh, which caused them to overheat because then there's nothing in there. Uh, and it was fixed the same way by just adding a knot gate. So that whenever it's bugged out, it will always uh, give a negative signal, so it will never start, unless there's something in here. Then I added a, a pressure sensor here that operates the, the bottom door. Because when I was uh, vacuuming the entire system, I noticed that it took very long to vacuumize the entire top part of the building. And I didn't really want to add another pump, so... I just winged it and apparently if you leave like 10 grams per tile uh, in this top room it works itself out and the gas just disappears when you fill it up so whenever uh, it's well enough vacuumed for it to start up I just close the door then this pump easily completely vacuum vacuums this, uh, this room and you can start the machine and finally I added a power stage to the doors for if you want to initialize it faster and you can run off some of the power that you're creating to uh, enhance the efficiency of your door pump um, yeah and this only uh, causes you to need less steam so it, it will be in equilibrium sooner but it will cost you about 360 watts of power and that's about it for now so that's the current state of it and I'm sure there are some unseen bugs and issues, uh, but we'll just have to find them along the way. For now, I hope you've enjoyed the build, and if you're gonna build it, well, I wish you good luck. And of course, let me know your thoughts and suggestions. And then all that rests me to say is uh, thank you for watching.